Let me begin by saying thank you for all the prayers for our family and for the Watkins family. Uh, we all came this week and we stood in a, in a hard place. Uh, bidding farewell to someone who was very loved here in our church community and a great neighbor and friend and uh, went back yesterday afternoon stood there over that plot of grass because uh, because of her husband's health we were not out there at the graveside very long on that afternoon but stood there and I said it just seems like you couldn't be here in this place because uh, Judy uh, walked with God, seemed to get past everything that came into her life. But we have to understand that as I was reading Psalm, I think it was 139 this week, there's a scripture that says, in your book you have numbered my days. And every one of us sitting here God knows exactly how many days that we're going to live. And all we can do is know Him and live it out for Him. And every breath that we breathe be for His glory. Amen. That should be all of our prayers that's in here this morning. You know, as I was uh, preparing for today, uh, I, I kept hitting roadblock after roadblock after roadblock. And, and this morning, um, I sat down early at the table and... My mind was kind of going to a certain place, and a scripture popped into my mind. And, and I thought it was a whole verse, but it was just a parcel of a verse. So as I was starting to research what that scripture, uh, the whole meaning of that scripture, I got a text from another pastor in the area, and he said, uh, Brother, you and I will agree in the Lord to bind this hurricane out in the Atlantic, and I, I'm going to ask my congregation to do so, and I pray that you will also. And believe it or not, it harkened back to the scripture that I had just been sitting there reading about if Elijah can pray that it won't rain. And the Lord heard that prayer, and he answered that prayer. And that prayer was for his glory and for his purposes. Then we certainly today, by the end of this service, can agree in one accord to pray in the name of Jesus that this storm can either fall apart or it can go back out to the ocean because not only do we not want it to hit us, but we don't want it to hit our, our neighbors either. We don't want it to hit South Carolina or Virginia or anywhere else up the coast because uh, how can we take comfort in being spared a hit but then be satisfied that someone else gets hit by this storm. So by the time this service is over, we're going to uh, have corporate prayer for that. Uh, I would like to say thank you for coming for Friend Day today. In the back of each pew, there is a uh, visitor's card. We'd hope that you'd fill that out so that we can send you a thank you for coming out and, and being with us today. Let me remind you at the conclusion of our service today that um, we will have a meal next door in the fellowship hall. And I think all of that's being laid out and planned and, and getting ready for us right now as we're sitting in here uh, being able to uh, be together to worship. Uh, those visitors' cards, you can just leave those sitting in the pews where you're sitting when you get up to leave. And uh, once again, let me say I'm thankful. Uh, God was with us this past weekend. We felt your prayers. Uh, God has been with us all week through uh, sickness and certain sadness and things that were hard to do and he is with us here today do you feel the lord here with us today uh, the lord is here with us so what i like to do is i would like to ask you all to turn with me to the book of james chapter five <clears throat> <clears throat> and usually what i do is i preach and i ask for you to have a response at the end of the service. But this is going to be a flowing service. Where there will be an opportunity for response. All the way through this service. And the, uh, the guys in audio up there are going to help us out a little bit. 
uh, because this is going to be a time of prayer. As I asked the Lord, what is it that you would have us to talk about today? He simply said, prayer. Prayer. And we have been in a season of prayer here about a lot of things for quite some time. Asking the Lord what is His will and asking that we would be able to accept it. You know, that's the other part of God's will. The first part is, Thy will be done. And the second part for us as believers is that we would be able to accept whatever God's will is. And realize that He is a loving Father. And realize that whatever happens in our life is for His glory. Whether it be something we consider easy or whether it's something that we struggle with. May it be for God's glory. Let's bow our heads. Lord, we thank you for being here with us. Lord, as I said at Judy's funeral on Thursday, Lord, if we know Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, God lives inside of us. And Lord, we are so thankful to be here today. Lord, amidst all the turmoil and the temptation and the trials, Lord, that have come against all of us this week. Lord, we are thankful that you were right there with us, Lord, and that you were faithful in all that you have said and all that you have done. Now, Lord, may everything that we say and do today be for your glory. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Here in the book of James, looking with me in chapter 5, verses 13 through 18, um, this is the only scripture we're going to look at today. But as I said... We're going to look at this scripture, and I pray that you will have yourself conditioned to respond to this scripture. And there's going to be opportunity for that throughout the service. Here we see, it says, If anyone among you, is anyone among you suffering? That is a question. I want you to internalize that this morning. Is there Someone among us today, here in this sanctuary, that is suffering. God wants to be close to you today. And whatever He chooses to do, He can do. But what I want you to do is condition yourself, and I want you to start getting yourself into a place of prayer position yourself this morning in a place of prayer so that if you are suffering this morning that you will be positioned to respond to whatever the Lord would have you to do because it says if you are there let him pray let that person pray that is suffering this morning That means just have a conversation with Abba Father, with Daddy, with God. Talk to Him just like you would anyone else. He's not afar off, especially if you're a believer. As I said, God is in you. You don't have to speak out loud to Him. He's right there. He's listening. He's here with you today. Know that, that He is here with you. And start to talk to Him about your suffering that you may find yourself in. There are so many different ways to suffer in this world, and you know exactly who you are and what your suffering is. But then it also says, and, and what, Robert, this was the first time this morning that you sung the way that you did, and it... It sounded as though you knew the scripture I was going to use this morning because it says, If anyone is cheerful, let him sing in psalms. Sing songs unto the Lord. So vice versa. Maybe you've come in here today and you can hardly contain what God has done in your life over your life, or this week, or this month, or just today. If that be you, sing His praises today. Don't hinder what the Holy Spirit would have you to do. 
This is God's service. This is His time. We are here for Him. And then it says, Is anyone among you sick? Another question. I understand this one. And it simply says, Let him call for the elders of the church, and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. Now here in a moment, we're going to have a time for this. We're going to have a time for the sick to come forward. And I'm going to ask some of our folks here at the church, I'm going to, so that you'll know, as I was researching this this morning, if you are an elder in age and you have a prayer ministry, I want you to start conditioning yourself to be a part of praying over the sick. If you are an active deacon in this room, I'm going to ask you to be a part of praying over the sick. So start to condition yourself to be right where God would have you to be to pray over the sick this morning. Because it says, And the prayer of faith will save the sick, and the Lord will raise him up. And then it says, And if he has committed sins, he will be forgiven. We're going to give everyone an opportunity this morning to look at yourself. Combine your, compare your life to the life of Jesus Christ. And what in your life needs to be fixed? What in your life have you let go? What in your life is out of sorts and isn't where it's supposed to be? And the Holy Spirit keeps telling you that's not right. You need to give this to God. So that he can draw close to you and you can draw close to him. Because verse 16 says, Confess your trespasses to one another and pray for one another that you may be healed. We'll have an opportunity in this service so that if there's somebody in here that you consider a prayer partner and you've got unconfessed sin in your life and you would like to go with that person to the altar and pray, that that sin would be removed. <clears throat> we want to give you that opportunity. It says, The effective, fervent prayer of a righteous man or woman avails much. And then it says in 17, and we will look at this and we'll think about what God can do in a situation that seems impossible. Elijah was a man, listen, with a nature like ours. What does that mean? That means that he was born of a woman. He was born into that sinful nature. Yet he come to know God. God chose him to be a prophet for him. He had to live for God. And it was just as tough sometimes as what it is for you to live for God. In fact, we find him very faithful at times, and then at other times we find him whimpering underneath a tree, thinking that someone was going to persecute him because he became afraid. He had the same nature as ours. But it says, and he prayed earnestly that it would not rain. And listen, and it did not rain on the land for three years and six months. You say, well, does, does one person who's just like me have that power? No. But he had a relationship with God. And he asked for God to do something that would bring glory to God. God did it. Because it says in 18, And he prayed again, and the heavens gave rain, and the earth produced its fruit. That was used as an evangelism tool for Elijah when he did that. And can you believe what would happen if next week, if that storm continued to come toward us, and then all of a sudden hit that high that all of us have been talking about and just took a hook? what it would do for our faith, knowing 
like in Elijah's time that it didn't rain for over three years, that God chose to send it a different direction. You see, that's what it's all about. It's what God chooses to do. You know, we can only pray that God's will will be done. We can pray that that storm will go out, but God's will be done. Because what God will do in this situation is one of two things. He'll either send it out where it doesn't affect anyone, doesn't harm human life, which is the most important thing. Or we'll have a time of trial. And we'll have to cling to God. And we'll have to come together as community. And we'll have to be servants of an almighty king. Serving our neighbor. And letting our neighbors serve us and not being prideful. Whatever God wants, we should still say, your will be done. But today we're going to ask. Just as Elijah asked God for it not to rain, we're going to ask at the end of this service that this storm will not come. And I pray that you will condition yourself to believe that whatever God wants to happen can happen. There are no things that are impossible with our God. So what I want to do to start with this morning is I'm going to ask them to play some music for us for just a moment. And I want you to start thinking about if you are here and you are suffering, it says, let them pray. And if you are sick here today, maybe no one knows about your sickness and Maybe you don't want anybody to know, but we want to give you an opportunity that if you are sick, that you can be prayed over. So as they play some music, I want everyone in here this morning to be in prayer, drawing close to God. And if you are suffering, I pray that you'll give it to God today. If you are sick, I pray that you'll give it to God today.